Jan and Kimberly are advocates who support an age requirement to play collision sports. Uh, why? Uh, because they say both their sons died due to brain injuries caused by playing football. And uh, welcome to both of you. Um, nice. I can't imagine uh, what you've gone through. Jan, tell me about the history of, of the brain injury. Um, my son started playing football when he was 11 years old, tackle football. Um, he played through high school. Um, he was lucky enough to get to play at uh, Arizona State. In college, he had a series of three concussions um, that he supposedly recovered from. That's what the uh, neurosurgeon told us. And my son was the life of the party. He was literally, I, you know, people joke and say that, but he really was. He, he commanded the dance floor. He was the DJ at parties. He had so many friends, it was crazy. He, uh, he was just the greatest kid in the whole world. And um, a few years after college, uh, in 2017, his personality suddenly started changing. He became more withdrawn. He was having severe headaches. He was paranoid. Uh, we tried to uh, uh, seek help. He went to uh, uh, the hospital to have CT scans done to see what was causing the headaches. They couldn't find anything. Uh, we sent him to a psychiatrist. We thought this was um, some sort of... Uh, um, you know, other type of issue, and the psychiatrist determined he had no mental illness. Um, and then, unfortunately, we ran out of time. He uh, took his own life in uh, July of uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. They ultimately discovered uh, that he had stage two CTE? That's correct. He had uh, nine CTE lesions. Uh, they found in his brain, in the frontal lobe part of the brain, which controls um, logic, uh, emotion, personality. It really is the personality hub of your brain. Our son, Paul, played football from 7 to 15 years old. He started out as a um, nose tackle at 7, and he was the smallest kid on the team. He later played quarterback in other various positions. He only played one year of high school. And uh, at 24 years old, he drove 78 miles an hour on a motorcycle in a 35 mile an hour zone into another car and killed himself. When I got the call from the police to describe what happened, it was really shocking to me. A, I didn't know he even owned a motorcycle. Um, he had no experience in riding them. And uh, it wasn't just that he died. It was the fact that he hit a woman with her kids in the car and could have killed them. That's not something that he would do. And after um, being a consultant on the NFL brain injury case, um, I decided that it would be important to have his brain looked at for further study to see if there was something more behind this erratic behavior that really ended his life prematurely. And uh, seven months later, we found out that he had stage one CTE. But that's not really what shocked me. It was the thinned uh, corpus callosum, the thickened amygdala, this enlarged left ventricle that looked like a 70-year-old guy with Alzheimer's. I would have never signed my kid up to take hundreds and thousands of hits had I known that that's what his brain would have looked like under a microscope. You bring up something uh, in, in terms of the number of hits because, Doctor, it's, it doesn't, it isn't limited to one major hit. Sometimes it can be repetitious, smaller hits that can have an impact. Yes. Yeah, cum cumulative effect, I mean, is that I think the offensive and defensive linemen who actually hit heads every single play. Right, right. I mean, uh, we focus on football. There's so many different sports, but that's actually one of them that I, I think uh, there's an awareness now that has been raised, and certainly in the NFL, and and uh, uh, it is permeating down through the rest of the the football world is that the the linemen well, have what this I tell low. Parents is like, look at that glass of water. That's yeah. your kid's brain. Every time they take a little hit a drop comes out. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.